They're on the attack. And let's add an attack animation to our entity. All right, we found some back intelligence more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding an attack animation to our custom entity, namely, of course, the Rhino right here. Now, the real secret is that, well, the attack animation was with us all along, as you can see. When we've exported this, the attack animation was there, and we basically just need to, well, somehow trigger the animation, which is, I'm not going to say, like, more complicated than you might think, but it does involve making a custom go. And that's basically going to be the main thing that we need to take a look at. So first of all, we basically want to make the same thing that we've done with the idle animation, but with the attack animation. So when is this actually going to play? The way that this is going to work is in a couple of ways. Firstly, I'm going to make an entity data accessor. So I'm just going to add this and I'm going to explain what that craziness is. This is an entity data accessor of type boolean called attacking. And this is equal to a synced data entity data dot define ID, rhino entity dot class, and then entity data serializers dot boolean. So this looks absolutely freaking crazy. But what is it? Basically, it is just a boolean that automatically synchronizes between the server and the client when we change it. That's the basically the level of abstraction that you need for this. The rest is details that you don't really need to think about. We will need another animation state and, and timeout over here. So we're going to call this the attack animation state and the attack animation timeout. There you go. And then a couple of helper methods as well as a very, very important method. So when we have an entity data accessor, we need to call the define synced data method right here. It's extremely important that we keep the super here. And we want to say this dot entity data dot define passing and attacking. And the default value is going to be false. If we don't do this, then we will get an error and the game will crash, I believe. We're also going to make a public void set attacking just with a Boolean attacking. And that's just going to do this dot entity data dot set passing in the attacking boolean right here and then passing in the attacking right there. And then also to check what it is, it's going to be a public boolean is attacking, which is going to return this entity data dot get and then passing in attacking over here. And there we go. So that's going to be the three methods that we're going to need. And another thing in the in the setup animations here is basically the idea of when are we attacking, right? So this is going to be the following. So that we're going to say this dot is attacking. So if we are attacking and the attack animation timeout is smaller or equal to zero. If this is the case, then we're going to set the timeout to 80. Now, this is the length in ticks of your animation. So this should always be. So in our case, it's 80 because my animation is four seconds long. If you take a look at this, right, the attack animation, you can see it is exactly four seconds long and the actual hit happens at exactly two seconds. This will be important in just a moment when we actually create the, the goal. So if any of these numbers are different for you, you will need to either try out or calculate the numbers for you. This is one example. So there we go. Also, this is an if statement. I don't know where the if all of a sudden went, but there you go. And then we want to say attack animation state dot start passing in this dot tick count. And there we go. In an else statement, we're going to do minus minus this that attack animation timeout. And there we go. But we also want to do something. And that is if we're no longer attacking, this that is attacking is false. Then we want to say attack animation state dot stop because we don't want to finish the animation. We immediately want to stop the animation if we're no longer attacking, basically. So the logic of the animation is now set. We only need to now make sure that the animation state right here knows of the animation definition that is once again done in the in the Rhino model. And it is actually as easy as du duplicating the animate right here. Here, we're going to say the attack animation state. And instead of the idle animation, we're going to choose the Rhino attack animation. But we run into the same issue that the attack is never triggered anywhere, right? So we're not using the set attacking method right here, because in this case, we're not doing that. So how do we fix that? How are we going to well deal with that? Well, we're going to make a new package right here called this AI. And this is going to be our very own Rhino attack goal. In theory, you could also make a static class inside of the Rhino entity. I've chosen to just make a new class because I think that's a little bit easier. This is going to extend the melee attack goal class right here. We're going to hover over this and implement the or first of all, create constructor matching super. And that's actually all we need. Now, I will be copying over major parts of this class because it is just going to be a little bit easier. So we're first of all going to have an entity. 
a, a attack delay. This is the delay from the beginning of the animation right here, right? Until the actual attack happens at exactly, well, 40 ticks, right? Or two seconds, very important. And then it ticks until next attack, which is going to be 40 because once again, this is when the first attack hit and then the next animation starts in another 40 ticks. So that is quite important. We want to set the entity to pmob.cast and this is going to be the Rhino entity. There you go. And then a couple of methods. So once again, I will be copying over basically most of this class. This is available to you, so no worries at all. And we'll basically go through what each of the different things mean. First of all, a start method. That basically just is, hey, we're starting this goal. And when the goal starts, we want to set the attack delay as well as the ticks until next attack to 40 each, right? Both of them should be 40. That's going to be fairly straightforward and hopefully understandable. We then have two methods, one of which is actually going to be the stop method, which, well, we're just going to say, hey, entity set attacking false. This is the moment when we are no longer attacking, right? We're stopping this particular goal and we no longer want to attack. In the tick method, we're basically just saying, hey, right, should I count until the next attack? If I do, then I basically just count. This is just a countdown, so to speak, right? So it counts down to zero. And if it hits zero, then it stays at zero. That is the idea. And this is going to be evaluated in another method. But for that method, we need a quite a few, like an array of methods. I'm just going to copy all of them over. Once again, this particular class and all of the other rest of the code is all available to you. So you should be, there should be no issues at all. Right, so there you go. So we have the perform attack method. That is actually a method from the melee attack goal as well. Once again, in the goals, highly recommended to basically took a look at took a look at those as well. And you can see the perform attack. Basically, it resets the cooldown. So it sets the ticks until next attack to the attack delay times two. Reason being is once the attack happened once, from one attack to the next, it's no longer 40 ticks, it's now 80 ticks, right? Because we're waiting until the end of the animation and then another 20 ticks until the next attack happens. It's just basic maths. It's just a phase offset because the actual attack, right? The hitting, the hurting of the entity happens at two seconds. And then to go from that two seconds to the next two seconds, right? To like six seconds, it takes four seconds over here, right? Instead of two. That, that's basically the reason why this is sort of being reset first to 40 and then to two times 40, which is 80. Right, the big one is the check and perform attack method, which basically checks whether or not the enemy is within reach. If it is within reach, then we're, well, but we're basically starting to count over here. If it is the time to attack, then we're setting the attacking to true. And this is going to trigger the animation starting to play. And that is going to take exactly 40 ticks then until the perform attack is called right here. It's time to attack. Basically says if the ticks until next attack is smaller or equal to zero, which counts down from zero from 40 to zero, 40 ticks, which is exactly the time it takes from the animation start until the head swings up. And the only thing we need to do is the attack animation timeout here also has to be public. I'm unsure if this is a, you know, a good way of doing it, but that is the way that I found this to work pretty well, actually. And that is why I'm doing it like this. And then last but not least, we need two things in the Rhino entity. And that is, of course, the attack goal itself. So we want to say goal selector.add goal. We're going to add this at a priority one. This is going to be a new Rhino attack goal passing in this a speed modifier of one, let's say. And then also here we need to pass in a true. I'm unsure. This is a following target, even if not seen. I kind of feel like that is a wrongly named variable. I don't know because it seems to do something completely different. But who knows? I personally just set it to true and then it works. But we also need one more thing, and that is the is target this is target selector that add goal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new hurt by target goal passing in this. Now the target selector is different from the goal selector. The idea is that the target selector is like, hey, but if I were to attack something, what can I attack? Right? There's quite a few different ones for the for the target goals. However, I don't even know that. Yeah, there are the goal target goals. So nearest attackable target goal. You can see there are defend village goals, polar bear hurt by target goal. So there's a quite a few different target selectors that you can take. I'm just going to choose to basically hit the rhino and then it's going to start hitting me back. That's basically the easiest way to demonstrate this. But that is the entirety of the animation basically added. The animation is pretty easy. The logic behind getting the animation to work with the attack and stuff like that is a little bit more complicated. But overall, it should be fine. If you want to have multiple animations for attacks, basically, well, you're going to have multiple animation states over here. You're probably going to need multiple different attack goals. I would assume uh, that that would make a little bit more sense. But that would be the way to do it. So to close this out, let's go into the game and see if it works. 
All right, here we are back in Minecraft, and let's just go into survival mode, and if I hit him, we can see it comes to me, and there we go. Exactly on the upswing, basically, the actual animation or the attack hits, and that is exactly what you want to have happen. So you can see, there you go. And if I remove myself a little bit from him, you can see it actually doesn't start the animation until we're within reach, and then whack. That is exactly what you want to see, and that is custom attack animations, well, fairly straightforwardly, added to Minecraft. And that's it for the Entity Saga. Next time in this video, we'll continue with Entities, but a different type, and that is a Block Entity. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.